Okay, so let's see how we can implement RNNs using Keras. It's actually quite simple. It's basically what we've been doing before. Uh, so I'm going to create a model and then I'm going to call the Keras model sequential um, API. And then inside here, I'm going to start creating my layers. And it's really easy to create a RNN layer with Keras because, you know, as we said, they're simple uh, RNN cells and you basically call it saying simple RNN. So at first you can basically just create this and this will be fine. You do not, uh, of course, you also need to specify the input shape. So uh, yeah, and this, this will be fine. You do not need a separate input uh, layer because as we said, RNNs take inputs as one time step at a time. So basically you do not need to specify a whole new um, layer where you flatten the input and everything. Uh, so this, this would work. Here we would have only one uh, RNN cell, as we said. Basically it's just one cell, there's input and output and everything. Uh, you do not need to specify the input shape, shape because as we said, they are able to tolerate or adapt to many lengths, many different lengths. So you do not need to specify the input shape. But of course, you might not need to have, uh, you, you might not want to have this simple of a network. So what you can do is add more layers. Basically right now, just, just to not confuse you, what you're doing is not adding a layers next to each other. You're adding layers on top of each other. So let me quickly show you on the diagram that we had. So this is what we said an RNN looks like, right? By adding a new layer, you are not adding this, these ones. You're actually adding this guy, another one, and another one. So in the same timestamp, you're going to have more layers of RNNs. So that's why actually adding more layers here will make your RNN deeper. So then you can start calling it a deep RNN. Because when you only have one cell, even with 20 neurons, as we said, there's only going to be one set of weights, so basically parameters, and that's not going to be a complex enough model to deal with whatever sort of data that you're dealing with. And here, as I said, not, you give it none for the input shape because it is going to determine itself how long the network needs to be. So basically the things that we add next to each other is going to be determined or how long it's going to be is going to be determined by the data. Another thing is that you do not need to specify the activation function. By default, it's 10H. So basically if I want to, I can keep adding RNN layers. But one thing that you need to keep in mind if you want to do it that way is that you need to say return sequences as true, but by, because by default it's false. And what you do with return sequences is that you are saying, this is not the output of the cell. I am going to send the output that I have to a, a next RNN cell in front of me. And this way you will be outputting a 3D matrix to be sent to the next RNN cell. If you don't do this, a 2D matrix is going to be sent to the next RNN cell and then it's not going to be able to train because it's going to complain to you that, oh, you are giving me a 2D matrix, I need a 3D matrix. And you need to do that for basically every um, RNN cell that is followed by an RNN cell. So basically you have to do it for all RNN cells except the one all the way at the end. So let me fix this one also. Yeah, so this is what it needs to look like. But at the end, let's say, okay, I want another RNN cell here. And at the end, you can have an RNN cell as your output uh, layer, but you don't have to. And it is uh, proposed not to have it that way because you can just have a dense layer here like we did before, so Keras layers dense and then you can say you know i want a uh, an output in the shape of just like one number uh, if you don't do it this way then you are not able to change the activation function and you might want to use different types of activation functions because as i said 10h 10h or hyperbolic tangent function gives you a value between minus one and one if you want to use softmax sigmoid or any other or ReLU, for example any other different activation functions you should use the dense layer as your output layer and so far we've only used simple RNN layers, but if at any point you wanna use other layers, it will be as simple as this. So if you wanna use an LSTM layer, all you have to do is change the simple RNN to LSTM, 
or GRU and you will be using LSTM or GRU uh, layers. So what we've been doing here so far is a sequence to a vector type of network. And if you want to change this to sequence to sequence sort of network, what you need to do is make sure that all of your RNN layers, I'll just make all of these RNN just to not confuse you, all of your RNN layers have to have this argument set to true. So return sequences need to be set to true. And on top of this, to apply the dense layer to all of your time steps, right now it's only applied to the last time step, uh, you have to add something that is built in Keras called time distributed. So you can easily um, wrap the dense layer with the time distributed layer, and then you would have a sequence to sequence network in your hands. Simple, we just do layers, time distributed. Let's say I also want like 10 uh, neurons at the last layer. And basically this way you would be able to have a sequence to sequence layer. If you not if you do not have typos in Keras like me. <laughs> so uh, this is how to change a sequence to vector layer into a sequence to vector model into a sequence to sequence uh, model. And this is very simply how to have a uh, RNN network using Keras. There is, of course, many other things that need to be considered and uh, many other things that you can set, but it's going to look very similar to what we've learned already in our previous lessons about setting up a neural network. So by all means, go check out the documentation if you want to start your own uh, RNN network or train your own RNN network. But in the meantime, of course, if you have any questions, definitely leave it in the comment section. And now let's move on to convolutional neural networks. Thank you.